Now on KGW News. Who's making all of those endless robocalls? That's just not a, that's not a good look. Our investigators discover prison inmates on the other end of the phone. Plus, why are salmon getting smaller? And with the job losses we've seen over the pandemic, why are employers having such trouble finding workers? It's, it's a challenge. It's a real, it's a real serious challenge. But first, the answer to the question, when will Oregon get back to normal? Good evening, I'm Laurel Porter. Thank you for being with us on this Tuesday night. That answer came from Governor Brown today. She says once 70% of people in the state have at least their first dose of the vaccine, she'll drop the COVID restrictions that are now in place. Mike Benner tonight checked in with the restaurant and lodging industry to see what this means to them. We are certainly making headway against this virus. Oregon Governor Kate Brown delivering some promising news Tuesday. The governor says when 70 percent of Oregon residents 16 and older are vaccinated with at least one shot, she'll lift most of the state's restrictions. That means no more county risk levels and a lifting of most restrictions, including capacity limits for venues and businesses and limits on group sizes. Governor Brown believes the state can reach that 70 percent goal in a matter of weeks, seeing as more than half of Oregon's adult population has already received a first dose. I'm incredibly pleased that we've made this progress. And we do like to see where things are going right now, and we are cautiously optimistic about what things are looking like. John Hamilton is the chief operating officer of the Oregon Restaurant and Lodging Association. He says he's never seen as much hurt, heartache and depression in the industry as he's seen in the last year. But he's hopeful after learning of Governor Brown's new goal. It gives us a pathway to getting out of this. And that's really the end goal for, for everybody involved is how do we get back to what we knew as normal uh, so you know our restaurants and lodging operators can continue to you know, be that cornerstone of the local economy, which they really are. Before any of that happens, though, we need to get some more shots into arms. Governor Brown asking this of those who have already been vaccinated. Now, help a friend, family member, or neighbor make an appointment. The governor says in all likelihood we will still see masks and social distancing when the economy does reopen. Something else worth mentioning, beginning May 21st, individual counties can move into the lower risk level if two things happen. 65% of people 16 and older get the first vaccine dose, and the county submits a plan to OHA on how it will close the equity gap in vaccination efforts. For more specifics on how all of this will work, you can head to our website, kgw.com. You just heard Mike mention vaccination rates as part of lower risk eligibility. Here's where counties in our area stand right now. Only Hood River and Benton counties have at least 65% of people 16 and older with a first vaccine dose. That makes them the only ones at this point who could move to lower risk beginning May 21st. That's a week from Friday. However, a number of other counties are close. Multnomah is currently at 63%. Right now, a lot of industries around Oregon say they are struggling to fill open positions, and that's despite the unemployment rate remaining relatively high. Morgan Romero looks into what is going on. I posted about this on Facebook yesterday, and I heard from tons of you. Unsurprisingly, many said pay people a decent living wage. While it's true a lot of companies don't pay enough, the labor shortage goes beyond that. Businesses paying well above minimum wage can't hire. While job openings are back at pre-pandemic levels, companies almost across the board can't fill positions. Economists say Oregon's labor market has actually been tight for years, growing tighter during COVID. Multiple factors are at play all at once. Certain industries bounced back quicker than others as the economy reopened. They're now competing for the same type of worker. It leads to higher wages and better benefits, but industries hit hard can't stretch much more. Some economists say job creation is outpacing job searches. Businesses blame expanded unemployment insurance and stimulus payments. Some Oregonians make as much or more by not working. As we increase our wages to try to be competitive with other industries to draw those um, workers to our, our uh, place of employment, then we're competing with people that are also con you know, considering unemployment as a career choice. But when things are not tight, uh, there are people who are willing to work, but they're gonna wait for the best job offer, their ideal job offer. 
Another big reason people left and haven't come back, they're still needed at home. Many parents with kids learning from home or who can't get back into daycare have to stay with them. COVID concerns changed and cut back the labor force. Some people worry about getting sick at work. That's why Connor Lee says vaccinations will help the economy recover. Reporting in Southeast Portland, Morgan Romero, KGW News. There are new developments tonight on an Oregon representative accused of letting protesters into the state capitol. Mike Neerman was arraigned today. Dan Haggerty has more on the hearing and the climate now in Oregon's Republican Party. Tuesday, Representative Mike Neerman got arraigned on two charges for what you see in this video, opening locked doors in the Capitol in Salem for a crowd of people who were desperate to get inside, armed protesters who were there demanding to be let in for a one day special session as the building was locked down for COVID protocols. Later in that day, we saw violence erupt. The building was vandalized, a door was kicked in, and an officer was assaulted with bear mace. I will say nothing new came out in court today. Neerman didn't even appear, not, not on a Zoom, not in person, just as attorney. I do keep asking some people in the Oregon GOP if they are concerned about the division in party ranks, the impression of extremism from some of its members and messaging, and the fact that one of their leaders recently got charged criminally. I keep asking about these things, and the Republicans I ask keep responding with something along the lines of, well, that's politics. I got a chance to talk with the vice chair of the Oregon GOP, Herman Bertschuger. Now, he didn't want to comment specifically on Representative Neerman, but he did say this about the protesters that breached the Capitol that day. Um, it probably wasn't a good thing to do. But on the other side is, you know, our Constitution says that the legislature is supposed to be a public process. But this year, it's still a public process, except without the public. So um, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in that. Now, I pushed back on that characterization that it, quote, probably wasn't a good thing to do. And Bear Sugar deflected, bringing up the Portland riots, saying what happened at the Capitol in Salem is nothing compared to what we've seen happen in Portland. You can watch my full interview with him now and get a look at a change in the works on how GOP party, party leadership is structured in Oregon. That's up on the KGW YouTube page right now. And you can watch more in-depth reports from Dan each weeknight at 6 on The Story. It's a growing problem about shrinking size. You may have heard the stories recently about chefs sending salmon back or stores changing guidelines because the fish are too small. Commercial fishermen like Greg Johnson say it's not just perception. He's fished for years in Alaska and in the Columbia River. He says the fish he's catching now are smaller compared to just 10 years ago. He adds, the years when the fish are the smallest are the years the ocean is the warmest. Biologists say, without a doubt, a warming climate is at least partly responsible. In recent years, we've had more than our fair share of warm oceans, and that generates smaller fish because there's less feed out there for them. So a 14-pound fish 10 years ago might be an 11-pound or a 10-and-a-half-pound fish at the smallest right now. There are likely other contributing factors, too, like how the hatcheries are managed and a growing killer whale population. Other research has shown that the fish are smaller because they're simply returning from the ocean at younger ages, although scientists don't really know why. It could be the salmon adapting to better survive a changing climate and a changing ocean.